John chapter number 9. For sake of time, I'm just going to read two verses. This is a familiar story. Stories about a blind man sitting by the side of the road begging. Jesus and his disciples walk by. And his disciples had a little Baptist in them. They, they wanted to judge the fella. They said, who did sin, this man or his parents? And Jesus rebuked them, said neither. He said, this man was born blind for the glory of God. Uh, he, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't a sinner, he was a sufferer. Say, listen, sometimes Jesus meets a physical need before he meets a spiritual need. Sometimes he'll feed somebody that's hungry so they can hear the gospel. Hmm? Now, I know that's foreign to our thinking. You know, we think everybody ought to come to church ready to receive what God's got for them. Well, you don't know what people's been through before they got to church. Hmm? So we find this man, Jesus, heals him. Jesus uh, takes some clay and heals some clay. There's a message in that. And the neighbors notices that he can see. And all of a sudden, other people start taking notice, and they bring him to the Pharisees, and the Pharisees start judging him. It amazes me. Somebody get born again, then a bunch of people start wondering, well, did they pray the right way? Did they, did they do this the right way? Did they comb their hair the right way? It's about getting them to Jesus, is it not? Well, uh, they begin to question him. They question his parents. His parents say, well, ask him. And, you know, and they're trying to figure out uh, how this man got his sight. Hmm? Uh, can I say God's the one that gave him his sight? But uh, well, let's look at verse 24. Just going to read two verses and we'll get to the message. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner, speaking of Jesus. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for doing a work, even in regions that we don't believe you can do a work. Thank you, God, for being a sovereign God that loves sinners. And thank you, Lord, for being able to do the impossible because nothing's impossible with thee. Now, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. We thank you for the good grace of God. I pray for the next few minutes you'd speak to our hearts. I pray for every saint of God that, Lord, their soul be set on fire, that they'd go out and make Jesus attractive to sinners. And God, I certainly do pray if there's any amongst us tonight who are not saved, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Thank you for missionaries. Thank you for people willing to say yes to Jesus. And thank you for being a great God. Help us this night, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to notice a couple of things about these verses. First of all, notice this fellow's past. Look what it said in verse 24. Then again, they, they uh, again called they the man that was blind. He isn't blind. He was blind. He had a condition that he don't have anymore. Can I say, uh, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. I, I once was a sinner in the eyes of God, uh, but tonight I've been washed. I've been cleansed. Uh, I've been changed. Uh, and in his sight, I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a child of God. Uh, I've been saved by the good grace of God. Uh, I'm glad that there was a past, uh, but there is no past. Uh, when Jesus saves a sinner, uh, he saves him from his past sins. Uh, he saves him from his present sins. Uh, and he saves him from his future sins. Uh, say, what are you tonight? Uh, are you a sinner saved by grace? Uh, no, I'm a saint of God. Uh, hey, uh, he doesn't see me as a sinner because uh, when he looks at me, uh, he sees me robed in his righteousness, uh, washed in his blood, uh, and he sees himself. I say amen. Uh, 
we see his past. Notice, if you will, his position. Look again in verse 24. And said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. Notice his position. The Pharisees were looking for any reason to find fault in Jesus. Uh, any way that they could bring charges on Jesus. Uh, and they're trying to lead this man down a path uh, that wasn't true. Uh, notice this man just got his sight, uh, but he had character. Uh, Notice his position. Uh, he said, you can say whatever you want to about him. About all that, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he's a sinner or not. Uh, he said, uh, uh, all I know is I was there by the road begging, uh, and he came by, uh, and now I can see. Uh, uh, what a blessing. Uh, we see his position. We see his past. Uh, but notice his point. Look what he says. Uh, he says, uh, 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 whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. Uh, one thing I know, that whereas I was blind, uh, now I see. Uh, what a blessing. His point was, uh, you can say whatever you want to. Uh, all I know is I was blind, uh, but now I see. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, hey, uh, there's a lot of things people might want to indict us about. Uh, there's a lot of things people might want to question us about. Uh, all we need to do is get to the point. Uh, I once was a sinner. Uh, now I'm saved by the grace of God. Uh, I once was a citizen of hell. Uh, now I'm a citizen of heaven. Uh, I once uh, 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 was headed down a broad way uh, that leaded to destruction. Uh, but now I'm on a narrow away uh, that leads to glory uh, hey what a point to make in this day and age uh, you know we live in a day and age where people don't want to make a point we live in a day and age where people talk around things uh, and they, they won't be nailed down to any position uh, 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 what a blessing for people to just stand up and be counted for Christ uh, I'm interested in verse 25 where it says one thing I know. I want to preach with God's help on that thought. One thing I know. One thing I know. Can I say tonight, I know I have a hand under me. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 33, 27, The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath the are the everlasting arms uh, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee uh, and shall say destroy them uh, uh, listen uh, one thing I know uh, I have a hand underneath me uh, I can only fall so far uh, and I'll fall into the everlasting arms of God uh, I'm glad hallelujah uh, I have a hand that holds me up uh, I have a hand that props me up uh, I have a hand uh, uh, that secures me uh, and comforts me uh, and helps me uh, what a blessing uh, uh, to know that I have a hand uh, underneath me uh, uh, listen uh, uh, Miss Crystal just had to take little Elizabeth out uh, uh, but I want to tell you something uh, little Elizabeth's not very old just a few weeks old uh, but one thing she knows uh, uh, when mama's got her hand under her uh, uh, she's secure uh, she's not worried about falling uh, she's not worried about anything uh, uh, she's got the touch of mama underneath her uh, and hey listen uh, I'm not worried about a thing uh, hey I've been on this path 48 years uh, and one thing I know I have a hand underneath me uh, uh, he secures me and comforts me uh, what a blessing to have his hand uh, can I say one thing I know I know I have a hand under me I also know I have a hedge around me mm. The Bible says in Job chapter 1, verse 10, when the devil uh, 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 came accusing the brethren, uh, uh, and the Lord uh, pointed out Job, says, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Listen what the devil had to say to God. Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? 
Thou hast blessed the work of his hands uh, and his substance is increased in the land. Uh, uh, the devil said, I can't even get to him, God. Uh, you've got a hedge around him. Uh, you've got a hedge around his children. Uh, you've got a hedge around the work of his hands. Uh, he said, you've blessed him too good, God. Uh, 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 hey, one thing I know, I've got a hedge around me. Uh, Lamentations 3, 7 says, uh, He hath hedged me about uh, that I cannot get out. Uh, hey, what a blessing that I have a hedge around me. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, the enemy can only come to the hedge uh, unless the Father lets him in. Uh, hey, uh, I, I have people tell me all the time, uh, Preacher, you're a blessed man. You have no idea how blessed I am. Uh, I've got the hand of God underneath me, uh, and he's put a hedge about me. Uh, he's put a hedge about my family. Uh, he's put a hedge about my life. Uh, hey, what a God. Uh, put a hedge about me. Uh, let the winds blow. Uh, let the floods come. Uh, let the storms arise. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I've got a God who's hedged me in, uh, and I cannot get out. Uh, I'm in his hand. Uh, his hand's in the Father's hand, uh, and no man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, one thing I know, I've got a hedge around me. Hmm? Listen. The devil can't get in God's hand. There's nothing that comes into your life that God hasn't allowed it to come. And God never allows anything to come into your life that He hasn't already equipped you to handle it. You say, Brother Doug, my life's a mess. I don't have that. Well, maybe you need the Lord. Mm. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I know Him. You say, you only, you only love God because He's been good to you. I love God because He's good. I love God because He first loved me. I love God because He came to me and showed me I was a sinner when I called on Him. He saved me from my sins. Uh, I love God because uh, He has proven to me His Word is true and He's proven to me time and time again uh, He is God. Uh, he is in control. Uh, and I love Him. Uh, not for the blessings and the perks. I love Him. And because I love him, he throws a little handfuls of purpose toward my way. Huh? Uh, one thing I know, I've got a hand under me. I've got a hedge around me. Can I say this? There's one thing I know. I know I have a helper in me. Jesus announced to his disciples he was going to Jerusalem, going to be crucified by angry men. And they got a little upset and was worried and all that. He said, this thing must come to pass. He said, if I don't go to do that, the comforter can't come. This is what he said in John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 26 of John 14, he says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things uh, and bring all things to your remembrance uh, whatsoever I have said unto you. Uh, 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 say, why does God take up his abode in his children? Uh, Psalms 54, 4, Behold, God is mine helper. Uh, the Lord is with them that uphold my soul. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, the Lord, when he saved you, he did a supernatural thing thing. Uh, he cut away that fleshly, that sinful part of your heart uh, and he stepped in uh, and took up his abode in your life uh, and you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, he lives in us. Uh, he uh, goes before us and teaches us all things uh, whatsoever be true. Uh, he walks with us and talks with us and lets us know uh, we belong to God. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, his spirit bears witness with my spirit uh, that we are the sons of God. Uh, hey, I've got a helper in me. Uh, every time temptation comes, uh, he speaks up says, don't go that direction. Uh, every time uh, there may be peril down the road, uh, he leads me a different way to miss the peril. Uh, every time I have a need, uh, he advocates and takes it to the Father for me. Uh, hey, what a blessing to have the comforter, a helper in me. When I'm low, he whispers comfort to my heart. 
when I get cold he flickers a little flame down in my soul when I start searching he reveals what I'm looking for oh I'm glad I got a helper in me one thing I know I got a helper in me hmm? have you ever been driving down the road and all of a sudden something down the side says turn the radio off you turn the radio off and then he gets to speaking then all of a sudden you end up where you're supposed to be and you don't know how you got there hmm. I got a helper in me you ever just be wondering about something and then on down the road all of a sudden he reveals it to you uh, I got a helper in me uh, listen he lets me know when things are right and he lets me know when things aren't right there's some things that you can pull up and you can be watching it and I don't have to watch very long because he's telling me no nope, God's not in that okay right. click the preacher you're too judgmental we'll talk to him there are some things I can't watch because he says don't it's okay you know why some people are so confused you entertain things you shouldn't entertain if you learn to listen to that still small voice that helper in you it'll keep you away from all that confusion stuff because he leads us and guides us into all truth and let me help you with something about the Holy Ghost. You know, a lot of people get scared when you talk about the Holy Ghost. Well, let me help the scared guy. The Holy Spirit, same thing. He never brings attention to himself. He always glorifies Jesus. So anybody that is doing something and giving credit to the Holy Ghost, you better watch that booger. Hmm. yes he's just as much God as Jesus but he chooses to yield to Jesus so that Jesus gets all the glory hmm. Jesus is the one that took on a body of flesh and went to the cross the Holy Spirit is the one who woos us and convicts us and does things in our life but he always gives the glory to Jesus amen that's one thing I know I have a hand under me, a hedge around me, a helper in me. But also know this, I have hope on me. Hmm. Uh, I don't trust in the Pope, and I don't need to take dope, because I have hope. Mm -mm. Uh, say, what are you talking about? Psalms 38, 15. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear, O Lord my God. Psalm 71, 5. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. Psalm 71, 14. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Uh, Hebrews 6, 19. Uh, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, uh, which entereth within the, into that within the veil. What are you saying? Uh, God gave us a blessed hope uh, he gave us hope even in this life uh, even amongst uh, uh, the wickedness of this life we have hope this is not the end uh, this is just the first step to eternity uh, we have a blessed hope uh, that one day uh, uh, the eastern sky is going to split uh, and the Lord's going to step out on the clouds uh, and with the shout of an archangel uh, and with the last trump of sound uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first uh, then we we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them and so shall we ever be with the Lord uh, I have hope uh, Jesus is coming uh, he's coming soon uh, my hope is uh, he may come tonight uh, hey uh, when he comes hallelujah we'll get a body fashioned like his uh, he's going to take us to a heavenly city uh, God himself shall wipe away the tears from our eye uh, there'll be no more sorrow uh, no more death uh, no more separation. Uh, we'll be with the Lord and the bride of Christ forevermore. Hallelujah. I have a hope. Yeah, absolutely. What a hope. 
I feel sorry for people who put hope in politicians. You do know politicians are out for the highest bidder. They're not out for you and I. There are people who put hope in religion. All religion does is bring damnation. Gives you a set of rules and doesn't give you any hope. Hope is only found in Jesus Christ. And I bless His holy name. That's one thing I know. I know I have hope on me. It's hard to get me down because I have hope. It amazes me. I've been seeing some doctors. I saw a doctor the other day. My heart rate was 42. They wanted to know how I wasn't dead. My heart rate never gets over 52. Never. They all think I have the greatest exercise program known to man. It's called preaching and eating. at will work. But you know, any of their their symptoms they want to put on me or any of their tests they want to put on me or any of that kind of stuff, it never brings fear because I have hope. Right. Mr. Ned, I tell you, I went in, went in for surgeries. They look at me, they can't believe my blood pressure's what it is, they can't believe my heart rate's what it is, they can't believe I'm all upset. They come in to give me an IV, I throw the arm out there. Huh? So aren't you nervous? No. Why? I have hope. You see, with hope comes peace. Hmm. Now, this may shock some of you, but it don't matter who's in the White House. I know who sits on the throne. Hmm. And I do believe the book, and God said he never seen the, uh, David said he never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. I don't like paying $7 for, for a dozen eggs any more than anybody else, but I thank God I've always got $7 to get eggs. Hmm. Huh? I got hope. I was so tore up today, I, I rode around a convertible all day. My nerves were shot. Hmm. So what was you doing? I was looking up in that beautiful sky, letting that sun, sun hit my face, saying, Thank you, God. You're a good God. Because right. uh, He is. Because I got hope. It's yes. one thing I know. I got hope. Now, I appreciate it. Folks have been asking me, and folks came up to me wanting to know the latest. I don't know any more than I knew before. Other than this, Miss Nett's already diagnosed me, so that's all I need to know. She, she's never missed it yet. But she's just waiting for the doctors to figure out what she knows. But the truth of the matter is, it don't matter. Because I know him. And he is mine. And I'm his. And I have hope. Hmm. Huh? Say, preacher, shouldn't you take it easy? I am taking it easy. Thank you, Sammy. Pastor Filbert, always right on time. This, thing, this one thing I know. I have a hand under me. A hedge around me helper in me hope on me and lastly this thing I know brother Brian I have heaven waiting for me I don't have to fret about what happens when I take my last breath to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord hmm? I don't fret over that hmm? I know heaven's waiting for me I don't know when I'm going and I'm not particularly ready to go right this second. I mean, I'm ready to go, but I'm not, you know, looking to go right now. But if it's His will, see you. Hmm? Uh, you can have it. You know what I'm saying? Huh? I told Miss Nett years ago, just put me in a pine box and throw me down the river. I said, don't have a funeral, have a celebration. Bring all my preacher friends and singers and have a time. As I said, I guarantee you one thing, I'll be having a time. Uh, I, this is one thing I know. Heaven's waiting on me. Uh, and what a blessing it's going to be going down Hallelujah Boulevard shout my lungs out Hallelujah to the Lamb of God hmm? so let me ask you something do you know these things? do you know you're going to heaven? do you have hope? do you have the presence of God living on the inside of you? Hmm? do you rest on his everlasting arms? Do you have that hedge about your life? 
You can, friend. It's as simple as realizing you need it and coming to Jesus and asking for it. He said, if any would come to him, he'd no wise cast him out. The Bible says, for whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved from your sins, and you can know these things just as well as I know them, because God's no respecter of persons. Isn't it terrible that in America, everything is divided because of the White House, and they're making an issue of race? But isn't it wonderful we have people from the Caribbean, we have people from the Middle East, and we have people from Kentucky, and we have people from Ohio, and we have people from West Virginia, and we have people from wherever y'all from out west. He's from California, she's from California, and we get along. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ made us new creatures. God is no respecter of persons, and neither is the Spirit of God. Huh? We can come under the umbrella of the love of God and have a time because we know Him. Do you know Him? It changed your life. Say, how you know? He changed my life. It changed your life. He said, preacher, but you don't know how I was raised. You don't know. Listen, I was raised. There, there wasn't a more racist family than my dad and his family ever lived. Huh? My dad supported and campaigned uh, for Wallace who wanted to put segregation back in the map uh, I grew up the N word was part of the vocabulary uh, say well what changed Jesus uh, listen I don't have a better friend in the world than that fellow over there that laughs like Rafiki I don't. But I see him. I don't see a black man. I see, I see a friend. Sure. Huh? I know that, brother. See, the hope in me, the one that lives in me, right. he changes all that. Right. He takes hatred and turns it into love. Yeah. Do you know him? Child of God, the Bible says this about the hedge. Now keep in mind, Satan couldn't penetrate the hedge. But the Bible says, Whosoever breaketh the hedge, the serpent biteth. Right. Maybe you've been going through some stuff because you've stepped, out, stepped outside the hedge of God's grace. That's where the serpent will get you. Hmm. I got good news. The hedge is only a prayer away. Good. You just ask the Lord to forgive you. He'll put that hedge back around you. Hmm. He'll help you. There's love at the Father's house. I don't know what you need, Christian. Maybe tonight you just need to come and thank him for what you know. Uh, quit worrying about what you don't know. Anchor your soul in some things you can know. And this one thing I know, there's nothing better than Jesus. Let's all stand tonight. Miss Michelle, if you'd come to the piano, Brother Clint, pick out a song. Maybe you need to come thank the Lord. Maybe you need to come tell Him you love Him. Maybe you need to come repent, tell Him you're sorry, haven't been what you're supposed to be. Maybe you're here tonight and you don't know Him. We want to give you an opportunity to know Him. If you'll come, we'll get somebody to take your Bible, show you how to be saved. You can be saved tonight. Tonight, if God's speaking in your heart, why don't you come? They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the love of God. Thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Now, Lord, I pray you'd bless this invitation. Lord, forgive my feeble efforts. I would have loved to have done a better job preaching these thoughts you gave me. But, Lord, I pray you'd take my feeble efforts and do something with them. And I certainly pray if somebody's not saved, they'd get saved. I pray if somebody's backslid, they'd get right. I pray if somebody's struggling, they'd get help. I pray if there's somebody that's just been a while since they told you they loved you, I pray they'd get that taken care of. God, just do a work around here tonight. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.